Um, so our next speaker is absolutely brilliant. It's Rob B. And uh, we're, we're just waiting for the cameraman. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> okay, so big hand for um, Rob. And I'm sure he's going to enlighten you on many things. Can everybody hear me now? Is it better if I speak like this or with the microphone? Okay, this is phallic. Anyway, uh, right, just before we start, uh, I'm a very sensitive character, so if, uh, rather than applaud, if you could just give me the jazz hands, please, yeah? Right, so people might understand that one. Right, now my name's, uh, I go by the, 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 the moniker of Rob B. I come from Wigan. I've got some of the, the guys down from Wigan here supporting everything you're doing here. Fantastic work, guys. Now, I'm fairly new to this compared to some of the old sweats, but what I tend to do is I try to, I'm an engineer, so I try to see how things work, how it comes together. Do you, do you, do you understand me? Can you hear me? I've got, I try to apologise for the accent, but, you know, it's this Welsh accent. Uh, right, so what I try to do is try to understand how things work behind the scenes and I'll put it on the table for people to, to use and I try not to get too complex because I believe the solution is simple. It's the simplest solution, it's the, uh, the Occam's razor. The simpler the solution, the more likely it is to work. So uh, as an engineer in the past, I found something done in a site, a building site or a, a civil engineering site. I didn't go to the, the foreman, I didn't go to the middle manager because you're involved in politics and papers and forums and all that nonsense, yeah? If I wanted something done quick, I went to the man in the tools or the guy that runs the company. Yeah? Does it make sense? You get things done that way, yeah? If you get any grievances, you avoid the politics, the, what I call the middle of the tree, the branches of the tree, I go for the root or the, the crown of the tree. Things get done that way. People are also accountable. Anyway, uh, so the, the subject of the talk we'll do tonight is You'll notice the date in this was 2013, this talk, 2013. And I think at the time it was people didn't quite follow what I was doing. And I think what the problem is, it's so brutally simple, people are looking for complex answers, it's, it's simple. And the, 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 the background to this talk is the presumption of identity. Okay, everything that's thrown at us as the legal persons, or as you will start calling after this talk, uh, the reflections, uh, is based upon presumption and you're assuming that presumption okay now I'll prove this right just before we start here uh, a word of warning for the future uh, when an opponent declares I will not come over to your side I will calmly say your child belongs to us already what are you you will pass on your descendants however now stand in the new camp in short time, they will know nothing else but this new community, Adolf Hitler. Okay, I think we're at that point now with this country, and the forces are far cleverer than Adolf Hitler, his gang, where this is a new gang or gangs, and are far more ruthless and more clever. So we've got to uh, know who we are. Right, now I wrote, just to give you a bit of a taste of where we're going with this one, I wrote to 50 embassies around the world and I said, look, I've got this thing called a passport. It's a nice little red booklet. It's got a picture of me on it, yeah. Other than that, it's just lots of black marks. I'm not a legally trained person. And the key to this is you are, how many people in this room have got legal qualifications? Excellent, okay. Uh, neither have I. So I'm what's called non-competent. <laughs> Okay, it's different from incompetent. Incompetent is where you, uh, you're, you're deemed to be, uh, you're, you're underage, or you're mentally unfit, or you're drunk, or there's numerous reasons that you can't enter into contract or agreement, yeah? Non-competent is different. Non-competent merely means you're not qualified or trained to do something. Okay, be aware of that. Proudly put your hands in the air and say, I'm non-competent, because that's what we all are, and legally, okay? Now, when we're writing all our letters, we're writing as if we have some understanding of the law. I have no idea what these words mean, no idea. All I know is the crap they taught me at a really appalling school, yeah? Uh, so I just go by the facts in front of me. I'm reporting the facts, nothing more. 
so anyway, uh, I wrote to 50 embassies, I've got this, this red book, it says Passport, and it's got European Union on it, United Kingdom, front and side cover, doesn't say Her Majesty grants you free passage, it says Her Majesty's Secretary of State, have a think about that when we run to country. Uh, but it's got a picture of me and loads of numbers and symbols, no idea what it means. So I wrote to these embassies all around the world and I said, uh, if I turn up at your border with this passport and you ask me the question, are you Mr. R. Robert B., yeah? what would your response be? Four would immediately jail me, uh, there's some at 25 would have immediately rejected me and forced me back in the aeroplane. The European Union went, yeah, come, anyone comes in here. But, so, it did prove that if, if, they, if I'm asked the question at the border point, who are you, and I asked honestly and truthfully, I do not know, there's going to be consequences. And what that does, it proves that the passport is based upon presumption and assumption. Because if they say, I mean, what is the passport? The passport, as far as I'm concerned, there's a little red booklet, I've no idea what it is, I've no idea who wrote it, who owns it, I've no idea, I've no idea, right? All I know is if I go to a border point, and I give it to the guard, it doesn't beat me up or jail me. That's the facts, isn't it? Yeah? Uh, so, I then, but now I've got some leverage, because I've proved that a passport is not fit for purpose. Okay? It's not fit for purpose, it relies upon me telling lies, and me making legal judgments I'm not non-competent to be making. First of all, am I Mr. Rob B? I would avoid using my real name here, but I, am I Mr. Rob B? Uh, uh, as a legal judgment, think about are you Mr. Rob B? As a legal judgment, are you Mr. John Smith? Are you Mrs. Jane Jane Doe? That is a legal legal determination they're asking you to make. I'm not legally qualified to make that determination. I know nothing about it. There's a lot of stuff out there about the birth certificate, there's a lot of stuff out there about SESTI KV. Yes, there's a lot there, I do know there's a lot there. However, I have seen nothing to prove any of this. So until I see facts in front of my face, I, I, that's, that's all I can report. All I'm doing is reporting to the other side what my knowledge and my understanding is based upon the facts presented to me. So uh, anyway, so if I'm trying to rush this, I've got a lot to try and squeeze in, guys. So this, uh, I got a letter back from, uh, I wrote to the, uh, 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 a lady you may have heard, Theresa May, Home Secretary, and asked Theresa May, look, this passport thing, yeah, I've just written to these embassies. If you'd written without that leverage, they'd have ignored you, given you some pass you off. But now I've got leverage because I can test it, because I could go to North Korea, or Oman, or Dubai, or any of these countries that said they would jail me, and I've now got a, a, a fairly serious claim against them. So uh, I asked her the question, I need that, can you confirm I am Mr. Rob B? Simple question, you think you should be able to answer that one. Can you confirm to me in writing that I am Mr. Rob B? Because I have no idea. Uh, the response I got back was, sorry about the quality you guys, I can't focus properly. Uh, thank you, this is from, uh, what she did do, she got the, the, the uh, Registrar General to respond back. Uh, identity problem. Thank you for your letter addressed to Home Secretary, which reached my office, blah, 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 the General Registrar Office, part of the Identity and Passport Service, private company, uh, administers and administration and registration in England and Wales, and I've been asked to uh, reply. I've seen the, the letter of the 21st of September sent to you uh, by Mr. Selwyn Hughes of the General Registry Office. Now this is, this is the important bit guys, note this, right, everything I do, I, I, I never go in anywhere and say words, words of hot air, as the guys who are in the uh, court in November, uh, words of hot air, okay, you need things in writing, I don't argue, I put this paper down, and what I'll do is I'll get one side fighting another, so I'll do is I'll write to one party, write to another party, and then get them challenging each other. Because I, 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 no, I have no legal qualifications, I, have no, I can't make a determination. So I write to all the parties and get them to clarify to me what the situation is. And then I'll get them contradict each other and sit back and watch the fun. Uh, I do not believe, I do not believe that the present position does, as you put it, force you to tell lies or to commit perjury. And I was arguing if I go to court and I say I am Mr. Rob B, am I committing perjury? Because I don't know. I need somebody legally trained to give me, to tell me I am Robert. Or Rob B before I can say I am in the court and you know so that's pretty straightforward. You have explained that you weren't formally known as uh, blah 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 uh, and that you took on, I changed my name, and that you took on the name Rob B by statutory debt in July 2000. Now this is the key sentence. 
you appear to acknowledge that you that you uh, were known by those names, and so I cannot uh, see how you would be lying when using documentation that reflects you. I'll repeat that again, it's so important. Uh, you appear to acknowledge that you are or were known by these names, and so I cannot see how you would be lying using documentation that reflects you. That's a lot more words than yes you are, Robbie. What are they trying to hide, guys? What she's saying there is that because of precedent, me using this vehicle, it's a vehicle, this vehicle for these years, I've set some sort of precedent, I've accepted some sort of acceptance of whatever, yeah? Uh, sorry? I've established the use of I am not the vehicle. None of you are the vehicle. You're only using it. I don't care who owns the vehicle. I don't know if I own it. I don't, I don't know who owns it. All I know at this point in time, factually, as I've got the use of it until somebody tells me not to. That's, that's the facts I, 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 I know. Anything above that, you're, 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 anything above that is uh, you making presumptions yourself about how things work, right? The facts are, you don't know what the name is, okay? Now, uh, and so I cannot see how you'd be lying when using documentation that reflects you. Now what they're talking about is the legal identity, I was challenging the, the concept of legal identity and the documentation that reflects me, yeah, that's a real interesting, so I, do I no longer use this straw man, legal person, all this stuff, yeah, because I don't know what that means, I'm not legally trained, however I know that somebody in a very important position of authority is talking about a reflection, so now I write, I write as the reflection, don't argue with me, I, argue, I, don't, I have no idea either guys. Somebody, what does it mean? I have no idea. She said it, he said it, I asked them, I have no idea. So, I mean, that's, that's quite an important letter. Now, I could go into great legal depth about the meaning of the words presumption, the meaning of the words assumption, and all that stuff, right? We haven't got time for that. You guys can do it yourself. But presumption is something you are offered. Yeah? So, if I say you're a bloke, I'm offering a presumption. I have no idea if you're a bloke or a woman. I have no idea. I'm making a presumption. If you go, yeah, you've just assumed that presumption. Is anyone confused with the concept of presumption and assumption? This is really critical. Please, please, please put your hands in the air. Presumption is where I presume something, offer you that presumption, and if you accept it, you've just assumed that presumption, right? Very, very, very important legally. Now, when you get a letter, what's at the very top of the letters you receive? Your name. A name, isn't it? Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. or whatever it is. Lord, Master, whatever. Uh, I stop at that point. I don't go beyond that. Because they've offered a legal... They've offered, they, they, they're asking me to make a legal determination. They've offered a presumption of identity. And if I reply back, I've just automatically assumed that, that presumption, haven't I? I've made a legal determination. Therefore, uh, proving myself incompetent now. Because if you're non-competent, that's fine. If I'm trying to pretend I'm a lawyer, I'm now being incompetent because I'm a moron. Okay? So I stop, I tend to stop at the very first the very first line on letters which says Mr. Rob B. I stop there. And what I'll do is I'll write to them and I'll say, thank you for I'll write as the man, Rob, the man, yeah. Uh, and that was who that was addressed to, that letter from Home Secretary was addressed to, to Rob of Clan Lennox. Uh, the da, 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 yeah, and re replying back to them, I'll say you're the legal experts, not me. Thank you very much. Now, what, what I need from you is your assistance, because you're saying I am Mr. Robbie. You, as a legally trained person, or working for the crown who knows about all this shit, right? Could you just confirm that I am Mr. Robbie, and then I'll happily engage further with you. However, at this point, it the appear the Home Secretary's backing off saying it and there's about a half a dozen other ministers that have said similar responses. Uh, and it would appear that when I write to the council and I write to every bugger, they'll back away from making a simple statement, I am Mr. O.B. So therefore, I am, now ex been, I am now acting competently by questioning this. So what I require from you is uh, to confirm that I am Mr. O.B. and I'll carry on working. Now what's happening here, guys, is there's a, 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 a commercial vehicle out there Right, in, in the, the true sense of the word. They've created a, a, a corporate entity called Mr. Rob B. And uh, they've, uh, they, they're, they're asking me 
to, to, to identify myself as this legal entity, right? If you're the managing director of a business, are you the business? Or are you performing a function of that business? Are you, carry, are you carrying the liability of that business? Right, that's a big question, because this is all about liability. What they're asking us to do is to accept full, unlimited liability for this, this, this reflection, right? A madman would say yes to that, because what you need to do now is limit your liability. Now, how many decisions are made about this legal reflection that you actually have a say in? Think of acts, statutes, laws, rules, regulations. How many decisions in your life regarding this, this, this legal reflection do you actually make yourself? I'd, I'd say it's less than 5%. 95% is told what we've got to do, how we've got to do it, right? So why am I carrying 100% of the liability for this? Surely the guy who's making the rules should be carrying liability for it, yeah? Think about that one, yeah? Uh, so that's further down the line. But what, what you're doing at this point in time is you're establishing what your life is. Simply what you're doing is asking, what is my liability to this bloody thing, this creature? What is my liability to it? Uh, and only the, that's how a competent person would act. If you're the managing director of a company and you're asked to make a statement, you would first of all understand the huge liabilities of managing director, criminal and civil liability from your actions. What you do is you exercise your due diligence. Has, has anyone not heard of that phrase in here? Due diligence. You know it. Right? A competent person exercises due diligence. Right? So you uh, start doing that. It's quote that, I'm doing my due diligence because no judge in the land could instruct you otherwise. No judge in the land can find against you if all you're trying to do is establish liability and then do some due diligence. It, anyone would be mad to do that because anyone who stops you doing your due diligence has now accepted liability themselves, have they not? You understand that, yeah? So if somebody says, no, I'm not letting you do your due diligence to check these facts, you stand back and go, you're now liable, mate. I have nothing to do with this. So I did this talk on 9th of November 2013. I think at the time everybody was getting thinking about acts and statutes and how deep you can go into this and Latin and you know learning all the law and stuff, which is which is fantastic, really fantastic. However, what you've done, what you've done before that you've assumed all full unlimited liability for the for this reflection, and you've uh, uh, you've engaged with them in the branches in the middle where you don't want to be, you want to be at the root of the crown, yeah? So what I do is, uh, another thing to remember as well, contract law, part of contract law is the agreement, the before agreement the parties must identify, must identify themselves and must identify their capacity. Now an example of that is if you're an agent for a company, you can present yourself as John Smith, fine, prove a bit of paper, yeah, okay, you're John Smith. What's your capacity? What you're asking is what, what power do you have to exercise on behalf of this? As an agent, are you authorised to contract to five thousand pounds, fifty thousand pounds, five million pounds? That's establishing the capacity of someone. So, uh, so the, the legal identity and capacity must be established before you can form agreement. If you do, if you, if somebody wants to form agreement with you and you just blindly accept who they are without checking it, you have not done your due diligence, right? And there's loads of people every year get scammed because they don't do your due diligence, yeah? There's some big test cases out there on this one. Anyway, uh, the, the trust law, the three tests of a trust, certainty of ob object, certainty of subject, and certainty of res. I won't talk about trust law tonight, but essentially if the parties have not identified themselves or their capacity sufficiently, right, it collapses the trust. So they, 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 they come at us with trust, uh, with trust law or contract law, we can collapse it, because we didn't identify the parties. And if if you turn and say that you accepted the name, I made a mistake. And I won't have time tonight to talk about it, but there's a whole doctrine of law of mistake, and you're allowed to make a mistake, guys. Corporations can't make mistakes. That's a tort. Yeah, that's 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 a civil offence, right? However, you as an individual, because you've not been trained, the government never trained, they never taught you this stuff in school. They should have. That's the negligence on their part. Uh, they never taught you this stuff in school. So you you are quite going to say, forgive me, I made a mistake. I thought I was, but I was a moron back then. I've now got more information. And I'm, I'm now putting it on the table and I'm explaining it to you what, what I know and how I, what I understand. I'm asking you for your assistance. You are at no point making any statements. Never make a statement. Ask them to make the statements. Yeah? You create no controversies. Is this, is this, is it, is this as simple as it sounds? Is, does it sound simple?
Yes, 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 yes. Because they never taught you that stuff. And they should, they knew this when you were using the SLS paperwork, right? They knew that you were only using the vehicle and you'd done the You've just found out. You've just found out stuff that nobody told you. So you can argue disclosure, you can argue deceit, I and mean, it's up to you. But if you look, uh, the, the, uh, there's a few good there's a few good websites online you can look up mistake and it's very simple there's collateral mistake there's common mistake there's very mis various mistakes there wasn't a common mistake because you didn't know but they did nobody who's got a legal team can turn and say we didn't know fact they're, they're legal experts they cannot say we didn't know that your identity was actually mm, quite questionable you can have no legal team Yes. And that's a, va that's a solid point. I've done a lot of work on the birth certificate. Yeah, again, different from everybody else. But it does, the birth certificate is not evidence of identity. Now, I've not, I've not, I don't read the birth certificate. I actually wrote to the General Registrar Office in Scotland and asked, is this evidence of identity? No, it's not. Every document you're asked to shoot to prove your identity is based upon what? Birth certificate. None of it proves identity. All of those documents, so all of those documents, offer a presumption of identity. It's all they do. Sorry. Yes, I do. Because the original is in the short form, the, the extract. Right. Right, okay. I'll give you the facts now, right? The facts are, now I've wrote, I've written in this one to them, right? The facts are, my generation, and some of your generations, up till uh, just two years ago, were born under different codes. Uh, 2000, any kids born after 1st of April 2013 are born under Napoleonic code, right? Be aware of that. It's, uh, uh, I forget the name of the statute. It's a statute in the statute books. You're no longer born under the Key after 2013, the Polonic Code. However, uh, at the birth registration event, now this is where I wrote to the, this is where I wrote to the General Registrar of Scotland. At the birth registration event, uh, who at that event was known by identity? At that birth registration, you get a mother, presumably. I'll, I'll look at a, a normal nuclear family. Mother, father, little kicking, you know, screaming me, and some guy called the registrar. That, that's it. Your mother was never asked to prove identity. They took it in blind faith. Your father was never asked to prove identity. However, the registrar was known. So the only person, the only individual at that, at that event, alleged event, was the registrar. So how do I know, right, uh, that the, the woman in question was my mother? How do I know that the man in question was my father? Because of strange things happened in the past, doesn't it? Where stolen babies and you know family intrigues and stuff yeah and there's also how do I know that that baby that was my father that could be my father's brother that sired me with my mother and DNA can't take can't prove that by the way can't disprove it so there's a whole lot of vagueness about who was at that 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 uh, birth birth event and uh, what powers he actually had everything that was on that birth event was based upon presumption and assumption. So the, the registrar allowed them to presume identity and the registrar assumed that for the purposes of filling out the filling out the book. So that is that is the reason why it's not identity. It can't be proven identity because nobody was proved to ident asked to identify themselves. Okay? Now if they turn around and say about DNA evidence, DNA if my father's brother and my mother's sister had a, 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 a liaison as, as, as intrigues do and uh, sired the child and they decided they didn't want they didn't want the child and my you know, two, two, two parents of mine decided that they were they would take the child on board and present it as their own right this happens guys all through history it's happened right their system cannot pick up those intricacies so they cannot say with 100 percent certainty that anyone in that bit of paper other than the registrar is who they were Okay, so that's why the burst that's why the burst certificate is again it's it's a presumption and assumption. Yeah, it's a bit of paper, it's just a bit of paper, it doesn't prove anything. Yes, absolutely, because they yeah, absolutely, right. 
However, all they'll do again, they'll offer a presumption that'll be assumed as it's all no identity is certain. There's no such thing as certainty of identity, right? I changed my name in 2000, so my ide I, I altered my identity. So I'll change the presumption for people, right? Well, did you know that banks will accept your birth as identification if you're under 16? That's interesting. They do, because that alternate went to the open account, and because you're under 16, they ask them to bring a birth certificate with them. So there you go, banks, are, banks will accept a birth certificate as evidence of identity if you're under 16. Right, They'll, what they will actually do is offer the presumption of identity, right? Yes, and that means, and that that backs why the passport is is is, is, is meaningless. It's, it's, it's just a bit of red book. You need the pat. You need a birth certificate. That's what's backing that passport up, right? So yeah, again, I've, I've, by challenging who was at that birth registration event, the certainty of the events, the certainty of the information gleaned, everything based upon that is now I've ripped the foundations out from underneath it. Yeah, okay. Now, as I say, I don't make this. I don't make this stuff up. I actually write letters uh, to the General Registrar Office of Scotland, England, uh, Home Secretary, uh, every man and his dog, because uh, I prefer talking from bits of paper and letters rather than stuff I've just read on the internet. You know, seen in YouTube. I'll run you over a quick a presentation, and I'll flash through this. Uh, mistake of certainty of identity, and run through some, run through some key concepts. This is a tour presentation I'm going to blast through in five minutes. Uh, disclaimer is I'm not a practitioner of law. When I write a letter, the first sentence I write in every single letter I write is I'm not qualified or competent in matters of law. Right? Because if I don't do that, they can presume I'm a blithing moron. Uh, I do not accept liability or responsibility for anyone choosing to act in any of the contents of this presentation. You write your own letters, guys. Get, write to the Home Secretary yourself, write to General General Register. You can use my letters, feel free to use my stuff, it's all out there on the net. Uh, but it's better if you get your own letters, because you'll understand what you're doing there. And I tell you what, when you're asking just people in authority, can you just confirm in one letter that I am John Smith? And they avoid answering the question. You'll start going down a path to go, who? You know, you start to understand this yourself. So get your own on your own letters. Uh, all are encouraged to do their due diligence. Everyone should do due diligence at all times on everything. That means check the facts and act upon best knowledge. If you're not happy, if somebody's trying to force you into a situation where you haven't done your due diligence, it's quite reasonable for you to ask for a delay or a, a, you know, an extension of time to allow you to carry your due diligence and given that you're not a legal professional that extension of time can be quite, you know, as long as it needs to be for you to carry your due diligence unless they assist you. A SWOT analysis, uh, this is corporate stuff, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, everything you do you should do a SWOT analysis for, right? Look at their strengths, your strengths, their weaknesses, your weaknesses, the opportunities available to them and you and the threats available to them and you, right? And I promise you, if you start getting organised in your campaigns and what you're doing and how you approach things, from that point of view of a SWOT analysis, I know it's easy to skip over it and it's irrelevant, but if you do that SWOT analysis, I promise you'll sit back and go, wow, because you realise they have serious, serious weaknesses, wherever you're into it, the weaknesses. And a lot of the stuff I find people doing, you're confronting them with your weakest can everybody still hear me okay, yeah? Uh, a lot of the people I talk to, a lot of people that uh, speak to me, you are confronting them with your weakest tool, your weakest element, and going for their strongest. Their strongest is their masters of the law. They're legally qualified. We're, 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 tr we're, we're trying to argue in that world. You don't want to be arguing because that's where they're strong. So what you're trying to do is get them in an area where they're weak. And this is one area where they're very weak. Do your own homework. Yeah, we'll do that. Right, mistaken misrepresentation. Now, Hallsbury's covers mistaken misrepresentation. If anyone hasn't got a copy of Hallsbury's, put the word out and oh, a, a copy will, I'm sure, find its way to you. Uh, the Hallsbury's quite clearly covers mistake and misrepresentation. You must know this. Because when they turn and say, oh, you knew this. No, it didn't. I made a mistake. Right? I made a mistake. I'm allowed to make mistakes. I'm a man. To, to err is human. Right? Uh, 
A misrepresentation is a, a positive statement of fact which is made or adopted by a party to a contract and is untrue. So if you misrepresent yourself, your identity, right, you're now creating an untruth. And if you go to court and say that, that's perjury. It's contempt of court perjury, right? Write to the judge, write to the court first of all, as I've done, and just say, if I go to the court, the very first thing, give them back up a bit of paper, what you're saying, and just, in this very short letter, just say, if I come to your court and you're asking me, am I Mr. Rob B? And I say, yes, am I committing perjury? Now that you know this information, and I know this information, if I say yes, am I committing perjury? Right, you won't get a response, okay? Now, mistaken misrepresentation cover equity law, contract law, and common law. So it covers all jurisdictions, okay? Uh, I'm flashing through this. Right, plea non est factum. A plea, I mean, again, I'm not legally trained. I've found this stuff from the internet. It sounded quite intelligent. A plea non est factum. Can you keep your nose down? Wait, if I listen a minute. A plea non est factum. Uh, as a well-established principle of the law of contract, in the absence of fraud or misrepresentation, a person who accepts an offer made in a written document by signing and delivering that document is bound by all the terms of that document, whether or not he has read them. So that's normal, right? However, the law does not re does recognise in narrowly limited circumstances a defence of non es factum, which means it is not his deed, uh, is available to persons who have signed documents without reading them and were as a result mistaken as to the meaning and the effect of the document they were signing. I'm not legally trained. I have no idea what I'm signing. I have no idea. They're the legal experts. They've got a duty to explain to me what I'm signing. Uh, da, 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 da. So it's quite, I'll, I'll go over the, the, the main headings on it, the, the details, you'll probably work out for yourselves. So the various forms of mistake, mistake is to title, right? That could be the title you're using, that's, that's this vehicle you're using. What authority does it have? What capacity does it have? What capacity do you have operating with this vehicle? Yeah. Yes, there's something you're using, uh, so what is you, as an agent of that, what is, what is your capacity with it? So that's a mistake as to fatal. Mistake as to quality, uh, a mistake as to the quality of a subject matter will not render a contract void at common law. Well, again, I'm not going to get too much depth here. Uh, mistake as to possibility of performing the contract. Well, I can't perform if I don't know who I am. Again, uh, a contract finishes once you've completed performance. You all know that, yeah? A contract is ended if you complete the performance, right? How can you complete performance if you don't even know who you are? That's another thing. You can't sign the document saying that we've performed. Uh, mistake and equity. Equity covers this in some depth as well. Mutual mistake is where both parties are equally, uh, equally liable for the mistake. You've both made a mistake. Unilateral mistake is one party knows about it, the other one doesn't, which is what I argue. That they guys have got legal teams, they've got the whole Crown Corporation behind them. You created this crap in the first place, so how can you say you didn't know? You cannot make a mistake, however I can. Right. Now there's some test cases, uh, mistake of identity. Where a mistake as to the identity of the other party to the contract is made, the contract will be deemed void if the, the identity of that person is central to the contract. Now most of the stuff I'm hit with, my identity is central to the contract, right? So you must, that's when you do your due diligence. You check who they are, check what they are, their capacity and their identity, and you check your capacity and your identity. And interestingly, I won't talk with the council, but uh, where I come from in Wigan, by check, asking those questions, who are you? Uh, what is your identity? How are you, co this is for the council, yeah? How are you, how are you constituted? Where were you constituted? When were you constituted? Uh, can I see a copy of your constitution document? Uh, what, is, what is your authority over me, right? I found out there's at least five councils in Wigan and guys in Northam have found similar. If you go and start digging and do credit checks, you'll find there's more than one council in your area. And are you, are you dealing with the correct one? That's when you ask them the questions and they won't want to answer those questions. Uh, that's another big subject, but essentially if you just ask them, what is your authority over me? I believe there's five councils in the area and which one am I have to deal with? The fact is, they're in such a, an absolute fraudulent mess, they don't know themselves anymore. And the guys from Wigan will confirm this. Uh, 
Yeah. It's just the council tax, like diverse, it's not the council tax, council tax, it's the billing authority. And if you write and ask the council who the billing authority is, they'll refuse under the Data Protection Act, right? Because private individuals are protected. So you see two words there, private individuals are protected under the Data Protection Act, public corporations are. Then you write to Valuation Office Agency, who values the various properties, and they get very rude and, and swear at you down the phone when you ask them for a simple letter that says, we recognise XXX as being the billing authority for this area, for council tax. They refuse, you get all nasty with you on the phone, even though you're polite and one thing or another. And then when you write to them, they ignore your letters. So what you then do is you do a Freedom of Information request, and they refuse on the grounds of Data Protection Act to conf confirm who is collecting council tax. Right? Who the billing authority is. And then you write to the information commissioner's office and make a formal complaint. And the information commissioner's office upholds that decision. That the billing authority is not is not required to identify themselves to you or identify the capacity. Okay? Now, this gets very interesting because they're the ones that are supposedly prosecuting us in these hearings. So in, in November I challenged the judge and I says, uh, I need I need this guy to prove who he is. I take it as out fraud. That's just pure criminal cartelism, that's all it is. It's out and out fraud. If somebody's collecting taxes, alleged tax, let's call it a tax for now, uh, I think that's in the public realm, I think it's in the public interest that we should know who that identity of that individual or, or corporation. Uh, hiding it tells me they've got something to hide. Uh, when information questions office writes back to me and confirms uh, when I, I say to myself, uh, just be careful sir, because what you're doing here is very, very, very dangerous. You're saying anyone can now start claiming taxes and take us to court and nobody's allowed to challenge who we are. And I write to the court and ask the court, have you checked their identity? And they won't reply back, no letters will come back. I one court manager resign on me for that question. That simple question, have you, checked, have you done your due diligence? Because as a court manager, they're a, they're a legal professional. So they have a duty, an elevated duty, to check the facts, do they not? So therefore they must have carried out their due diligence to establish the identity of the prosecuting party whose complaint they have, they have accepted. Now this is me doing exactly what I've done with me, but turning it round on them. So they, they, so uh, she resigned, funnily enough, with uh, Justice Clark uh, three weeks after I wrote to him as well, retired. People retire, flies around with me resign and retire because uh, what you're doing is exposed they have now they're now you talk about personal liability bang personal liability now the guys up, my, up in the Ashton where we, we, we do our, our studies we've been looking into professional negligence claims this is how you get them I'd suggest the bailiff that's where you go professional negligence claims has the bailiff established who you are Right, okay. So, uh, and I establish who the bailiff is, where the authority comes from. I will only act on bits of paper. I don't care what hot air comes out of your mouth, bits of paper. Uh, so, the, the information commissioner's office, and I, I said to him, I said, the Russian mafia will have an absolute effing field day with this. If they can send us bills and demands, and I've got it in writing, I'll, actually give it, I'll, I'll read this in a minute. Uh, it's the, the council tax is not a bill. Guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to avoid the boring law stuff and try to just bring the facts to you guys. You'll prove what I'm saying here. Right now, uh, interestingly, back at the start of the day, they won't go for me. They go for the wife. She's not British, so she can't use this argument. Yeah, uh, but the 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 the. the Every time I go to court, I either get the tactical response from that surround me with guns or the local cops standing around with the spray gun sprays and battens and all intimidating. And I've got to say, if, they're, if, they're, if they're, the intention was to frighten the crap out of me, they have succeeded. They have frightened the shit out of me. And my little wife there, she was terrified. She comes to the Soviet Union, she's seen this authority as a, she was bred to fear. She was, she was raised to fear authority, right? So we wrote to the court and said, we're not going to a hearing because we're fucking terrified. It's going to for swearing. We were effing terrified to go into that room. Because every time we go in there, we get sound about big guys growling at us and barking orders at us and threatening us. And we're, we're not going to subject ourselves to them. So we are too scared to go to the court. And that's the most polite letter I've ever had responding to that. When would you like to turn up? Right? 
you cannot go there under duress. You, if you are, you're afraid to go somewhere, make it clear. I'm not going there because I'm absolutely terrified to go there. Yeah. Uh, a little aside again, you get a lot of asides here. Bullying. Bullying is professional negligence. If somebody bullies you, that's professional negligence, right? There's no legal definition of the word bullying. That's convenient because they've all got anti bullying policies, haven't they? But they're defining what it means. However, the one body they are terrified of is the health and safety executive because they're corporations and they all get, they all get shafted. Anyone works in the building industry here? You hear the HSEs coming along, what do you do? You hit the panic button, don't you? Right? These guys do it as well. The police are terrified of me. HSC have got more powers than the police, right? Uh, HSC, if you go into their website, and please do this, and please quote at them, gives a definition of bullying. Now, they'd be very brave to challenge the definition of bullying given by the Health and Safety Executive, because they're justifying that but based upon the harm caused to, to victims of bullying, right? And they give a definition of bullying for corporations and a definition of bullying for individuals. And interestingly, one of those definitions is a good one. Fate is a refusal to provide information. How many people have written letters and not had a reply back? Did you know that's, a, did you know that's bullying? You've now got a professional negative claim? Okay. Uh, right, this was back in November. We, I decided to have a wee, I, I decided to have a bit of fun in the court with them. I was proving three counts of fraud. Uh, I didn't want to get in the council tax route. This explains so much what I'm saying here. I wanted to prove three, three counts of fraud against the, the council. And for now on, I'll use the council. Uh, and I got this, this thing through. Now, interestingly, outside the court hearing, this is back to the identity thing. Outside in the foyer, it was listed as Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council versus my good lady, right? Remember those names, don't confuse them. They'll try and say it's the same thing, it's not, do a credit check, they're not. Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council listed outside the, the room. I wanted to film it. I wanted to film it. And uh, security guard came over and threatened me, you call the police and get me arrested for photographing the bloody listings. Photographed it anyway. Uh, went, into the, went to the court and uh, the, the, uh, the chap initially presented himself, who was sitting there, asked him if he could prove their identity. Well, 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 Wigan Council. Yeah, but I, I gave him bits of paper. You got a business card, and you get some letter of employment, something. I don't know who, what you are. Uh, a, a job description, some some sort of letter of appointment, something that you can prove to me. Hot air. I said, I'm not interested in hot air. Shut up. Every time he spoke after that, I shouted out objection. Every time the guy spoke after objection, no idea who he is. So when they can't form court, they cannot form court. A court is a trust, and if one of the parties hasn't identified itself, they cannot form a court. However, that's in the world of law. They don't operate in the world of law. They operate, operate firmly in the world of fraud. Now, the, this was uh, 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 this Wigan Council outfit with a PO box number, no physical address. You never ever respond. They've sent me a, a skeleton. I suppose a skeleton argument. It's all wrong. They've presumed the wrong argument anyway. Uh, and they've put a PO box number on it. Can you serve legal dog prints in the PO box number? How can I respond to a skeleton argument? I don't know who I'm replying to. I don't know what body I'm replying to and I haven't got a physical address to serve power papers on. How can I respond to that? Fair and impartial tribunal hearing, guys. Human Rights Act. Okay? How can I get a fair and partial tribunal hearing if I'm not allowed to serve my own documents? And you write to them and say who they write to and they ignore you. But however, there's a couple of little bits in this one. A council tax demand notice, often referred to as a bill, often referred to as a bill, because I challenged them, this isn't a bill. So they've confirmed there, yeah, it's often referred to as a bill. Well, I'm often referred to as bloody, you know, I make up as, make up as I go along. That's what they're doing. It's not a bill. It's a demand, right? Uh, the, 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 the Metropolitan District Names Order, 1973, provides a Wigan Metropolitan District, district under military law, and that's an area I can do a big talk on. You guys need to know a wee bit about military law. A district is an area that can, can be patrolled by a troop of soldiers. A region is an area that can be patrolled by a regiment of soldiers. Districts come in in 1974. I never had them before that. What happened in 1974, guys, is to bring in districts and regions. Anyway, uh, so this, this, this is an identity thing. The Metropolitan District Names Order 1973 provides that Wigan Metropolitan District shall bear the name Wigan. Fine. 
Since 1st of April 1974, the council's name has been Wigan Borough Council. Now how I forced that was I went into the, went into the, the, the archives and got a copy of the Royal Charter and then more importantly a copy of the Grant of Arms. The Grant of Arms is provided by the Collegiate of Arms and the Privy Council and that creates the corporate seal. Misuse of that corporate seal starts with the F word, fraud. Okay. So I established it as the, 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 the Royal Charter was fairly vague. All the Royal Charters are the same from the, the local government act 1974, they always say more thing, and it's vague. However, the, 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 the grant of arms was very specific, Wigan Borough Council. So that's the only body that can wield that corporate seal. It's the only real council. So before that, they were operating as Wigan Metropolitan Borough Council, Wigan Council, council tax notices were going out, all, all stuff was done in all these different names, and they hadn't used the proper council name, Wigan Borough Council, since 1982. So who the hell has been running our council, since our borough, since 1982? That's the question I was asking. They go on. Uh, this is the formal name that has been used on the council seal and all the legal documents. They're confirming that I've read it into them. They're confirming that, yes, that's the legal documents. Must bear the name Wigan Borough Council, black and white. Uh, however, we've not been getting name letters and our, our demands and bills in the name of Wigan Borough Council. It's a different name. If you do a credit check, you'll find they're a private company with two subsidiary companies, Wigan Council. They are not a public body. And just after four years of repeated requests, and some of the other guys from Wigan over there bombarding them with freedom of information requests, if you go to uh, whatdoknow.com, whatdoknow.com, and do a search on the Wigan Council, read their FOIs, we have torn them to absolute shreds. They do not know what they're doing. To the point now, if they confirmed, that no legal person wants to work for Wigan Council. Wigan, the, the council that's what, what operating the Wigan Borough at the moment has, doesn't have one legal person employed. That's why they're sending shit like this out. This is an accountant who wrote this. Uh, now, interesting, going to the, the slavery thing. In your statement, you've made regular references to contract law. Somebody mentioned that earlier on there. The person ties in contract law, yeah? Uh, and appear to wish to use this in your evidence for refusal to pay. I've never refused to pay. I've refused to pay them because I haven't proved who they are yet. I'm doing my due diligence. Because if I paid them money and it transpires they're a criminal organisation, I've just, I've just, I'm, I'm engaged now in criminality myself. I'm liable. If it turns out that that money's going to terrorist activities, I'm now involved in, in terrorism, right? And then there's the whole money laundering act as well. So you have a legal criminal obligation to check the names of people you're paying money to. Okay. I will, I will, I will go deeper on that. European Union's covered that. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to inform you that council tax regulations are separate from contract law, yeah, as it is, uh, name, name implies a tax, it's not a tax, a tax which you're obliged to pay rather than the agreement you voluntarily enter into. Now, how long have we got left to talk? How long have we got left to talk? Because what that ladies and gentlemen and everyone else in here is slavery. That is a black and white confession of slavery. There's two ways I can come from. Right, just, I'll go. Apologies to people that have seen my slavery presentation before. This is some you need to know because it frightens the crap out of them. And I would suspect we all need to be moving now, right? Because this is, this is, we've been messing around with little, little, you know, pen knives and a, a sword fight, right? It's time to bring out a bloody blunderbuss, okay? We had to be slavery. So to, how many people in the room can give me the definition of slavery? That's the closest people have been to my presentations in the past. How many people in the room can actually give me the, the legal definition of the word slavery? How many people are opposed to slavery? You don't know what it is? Right. I was the same guys, I just, I, I just I started digging, yeah? Now they, I wrote to the, the, police, the, the police commissioner for Greater Manchester uh, anti-slavery day, I believe it's the 10th of, no, of October now. All the government departments celebrate anti-slavery day. And it's our job, our duty, to go out there and promote anti-slavery. And to challenge slavery and to, to educate people about how awful slavery is. So I'm obliged by law to do this presentation, sorry. Now on his uh, website, 
this police commissioner, who's a complete tool by the way, uh, he uh, celebrated an anti-slavery day. This is appalling, blah, blah, blah. So I wrote to him as the Dignity Alliance, because we are anti-slavery abolitionists. And uh, I said, thank you very much for, for your support for our cause, sir. We are opposed to slavery. It's appalling, it's a disgrace, it's, it's, it's obnoxious to any free and civilised man or woman on this planet. Uh, but what definition of slavery are you using, sir? He didn't know either. He wrote back and said the statutory definition. Well, there is no statutory definition. It's international law. Okay? He didn't know. And then his, his sidekick is even more of a tool. He didn't know either. I, I was asked a simple question, it should be a one sentence response. If they have, if when somebody writes back to you with a simple question with more than a one sentence response, bullshit. You know they're, 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 they're flabber, they're, 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 they're filibustering, yeah? Anyway. Sorry? Yes? He's a servant, he's a, 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 a servant voluntarily. Right, interesting. This, I'll give you, uh, I'll go over the legal definition. I, last time I looked at a legal dictionary 18 months ago. I look at military dictionaries and commercial dictionaries. It's the only dictionaries I look at now, yeah? Uh, under commercial, if you look at commercial definition of uh, slavery using contract law, right? A free man or woman, you're all, you're all men now, everybody in the room's a man, right? you, you won your right to be men, you're all men. Why you, why you choose to be women, I don't know. You're all men. Uh, the, 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 right, so the, the under the, 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 the co uh, contract law, a free man means you're free to contract you're free to contract or free to refuse to contract. That is the definition of a free man or woman if you choose, yeah? Uh, a servant has surrendered some of his powers of contract to his master or to some other party to contract on his behalf. Does that make sense to you, yeah? So servant or a serf, yeah? Interestingly, a peasant is a free man. A peasant has no master. Be aware of that. I happily call myself a peasant. A peasant has no master. However, he can't own land. Well, we don't own land anyway because so it's hired from the crown. You're all peasants, legally. A slave has no powers of contract. He's no legal presence and has no powers of contract. His master has 100% powers of contract over him. Think about that. That's the, to me, that's the best definition of slavery. Because remember that the, the law and the legalese tries to interpret something else. It's usually commercial or military. They will try and accommodate that in the legal world and create new words and terminology to. And sometimes you read legal dictionaries and you're like, for example, district. If you look up a legal dictionary for the word district, you still go, you still don't understand. And that tells you that it's not them. They're, they're trying to interpret it, but avoid telling you something. You look at a military dictionary, it tells you the meaning of the word judge, court, tribunal, uh, 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 district, region. These words are all alternative meanings in the military dictionary. And we have, we have been under military law since the Civil War. We've never been out of war. The word peace just means you put your guns down so you can raise taxes and ding ding round two again. Peace does not mean no war. I've actually, if anyone can help me with this, right, I'm looking for a word, right, in any language, which means no war. If anyone can help me with that, please do, because I want to use it in my letters. At the moment, I have no word to describe a situation of no war, because peace just means the war. The war's still there. It's still, you know, just to, for temporarily, you've, you've created an armistice, you're putting your weapons down, so you can go away and create taxes to build more ships and build more tanks. That's all peace is. It's a very good test cases and identity, by the way, and you can quote these. If anyone wants this, uh, yeah, I won't go into details on it, I've got time. Cundy versus Lindsay, if, uh, what it was, the guy didn't check who, who, the guy didn't check who he was buying the handkerchief from, and he was liable, because, yeah, the guy was a rogue, the guy's a villain on the other side, but he should have checked, he should have phoned the company and said, is he your agent? He didn't do it, he was liable. So that tells you, if you don't check who, do your due diligence and check the identity of the other side. You're carrying liability for not doing the due diligence. It's important you do that. Right, there's a few other ones as well. There's three or four big cases. Right, this will make things a bit more interesting again. Now, uh, I am firmly of the opinion that pretty much, uh, you've seen that letter from this Wigan Council for whoever they are, and they're saying that council tax, uh, I'm obliged to pay it. 
uh, rather than agreement I voluntarily enter into. Right? That means it's involuntary. Now, a clever trick to use if you want yourself to prove slavery and get them to admit slavery is ask them. Don't just ask them straight because if it's legal person they'll understand. But trick them into admitting that you're somehow serving them. Right? Don't. Use, use your own words. But trick them into admitting you are obliged to perform a service for them. And then ask them otherwise if it's voluntary or involuntary. Because involuntary servitude is slavery, guys. So you can trick them into admitting that. The word slavery is a flag to them, obviously. If you do involuntary servitude, that anyone legally trained will understand that. But you can trick them. Or just read their own letters. They're like, you must do this. Must is an imperative. So it's just, you, you must provide a service. Okay? That's no servitude. Right? Have I got a choice in this? No, it's imperative. Okay, so that's, that's, that's involuntary servitude. It's now slavery. Or similar to slavery. Death is not the greatest loss in life. The greatest loss is what dies within as well we live, right? You have life within you guys. It's your duty to protect that. And you want to one life, right? Enjoy it. And don't give it to someone else. Uh, Declaration of Arbro. This is the Scottish version of Magna Carta. And I'll go, oh, stuff in English rule. It is not, in the last sentence says, it is not for truth, uh, sorry, for glory. Sorry, it is in truth not for glory, nor riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom. For that alone, which no honest man gives up with life itself. Right? And that is, that is my mantra, that's what I stand by. I don't care. We can all use that. The finest words ever written, as far as I'm concerned. But we know that. Right, unslavery, just take you through some of the main cases. The Quakers, I'm with other people, but the Quakers are eventually the ones that ended slavery, right? And there wasn't an army of them. There was less than sitting in this room today ended, ended the slave trade in 1807. So the 1807 Anti-Slave Trade Act, right? And there was a handful of Quakers led by Willie Wilberforce. Led by Willie Wilberforce, uh, who ended the slave trade. It didn't end slavery because there was a thing called East India Company and they wanted time to sort out the slaves they already had. But it, it stopped more slaves being created, okay? So they needed time. So in 1833, and it's a very interesting subject to, to read up on, in 1833 they had the Anti-Slavery Act, which made slavery against the absolute bile and venom of East India Company who wanted to maintain slavery. Uh, 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 King Queen at the time ended slavery and that was on direct orders from the King and the Queen and I've read it was a report sent from Ceylon, Sri Lanka uh, and it was uh, from a, a, a chapter that sent over there uh, as a, a, a sort of uh, a clerk if you like to administer a district right and he reported back to uh, Queen Mary I believe it was uh, and I must admit, uh, I'm a tough guy, I read this and I would cry my eyes out. The cruelty, sheer cruelty that these people were, were, were forced upon women and children, okay? And there was a specific group in the community who were doing this, I won't talk about that here, yeah? But the, the, uh, Mary was in tears reading this, and came really so. She showed it to the husband, she said to the husband, but end of the week, I want slavery ended, right? She made that order. And he, he, he took and he, he went to Parliament and said, at the end of the week, I want this ended. And it was. Yeah. They were saying that the man at the top and the man at the bottom it took the bloody king to go to Parliament and go, right, sort it out. Okay? Because there's too much money even there's too much money in the slave trade. Anyway, blah 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 blah. Uh, International Labour Organization, uh, uh, Slavery Convention of 1926, very important. The uh, United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, important. Uh, Council, European Council on Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. You notice the words there, fundamental freedoms. That's why I stand for. I'm an advocate of fundamental freedoms legally. I introduce myself to every man, his dog, and officialdom. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a domestic terrorist. I'm an advocate of fundamental freedoms. Okay. What can you say that Rob saying there? I use you know, the to Rob every time I go and call. Right? When they say that I can't stand and I have to do Mackenzie's friend, I say Mackenzie's friend. Yeah. What's that to fall? What's that? What's that to fall's case got to do with me? Nothing. Well, this case. Nothing. Right. So I, I say that I'm an advocate for fundamental freedoms. And that's the first thing I do when I go to the court, trying to represent other people. It doesn't mean you're going to win, but I mean, if it's for and on the record, that's what we're establishing, and that's what we're all doing. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so, and, 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 and it's wonderful that Rob's telling everybody this, because Rob's been telling me this stuff for a couple of years, and I've been 
educated for a rather a long period of time. I mean, you're an advocate for fundamental freedom. What could be better than that? What could be better? Now that, that comes from no, that comes from the United Nations Declaration of 1998, right? It's a big long title, uh, but it's what it does. It creates an obligation on the nation states and all organs of that nation state, whether it be public or private. If you identify yourself, this is how you must identify yourself. So we've talked about the past, how you don't identify yourself, right? How you do identify yourself is your capacity. When people say, what are you, what do you do? I am an advocate of fundamental freedoms as provided for in the United Nations Declaration of 1998, which you, sir, as an organ of the state, must comply with or you're now guilty of professional negligence, liable for professional negligence, okay? I'll report you to your boss, okay? Uh, very, very important quote, because that United Nations Declaration of 1998, 1998 make, gives an obligation on the state and any organs of the state, which is anyone acting in any capacity on behalf of the state, right, to recognise, assist and protect you. Well, I want to be recognised the shit out of, I want to be assisted the crap out of, you know, you know, I want to be protected as well, okay? You can, and I wrote to the Chief Constable of Greater Manchester and formally identified, because I partly identified myself as some sort of threat. No, I'm not. I'm actually a, 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 an anti-slavery abolitionist, uh, an advocate of fundamental freedoms, as protect, protected on the United Nations Declaration of 1998, and you, sir, as far as I'm aware, are obliged to recognise, protect and assist me. So do your job and assist me. And I get a lovely letter back. See, we've allowed them to identify us. You individuals out there have allowed yourself to identify. You need to identify yourself, who and what you are. We're talking about identity here. This is key to it. Uh, right, so we'll go to the meat trail. I'll keep on going with us. Right, up to 1807, each British colony was required to maintain. Can you see this? Over, 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 over. You can sit there, you want to grab a chair? You can sit there, yeah? Yeah. Up to, up to 1807, each British colony, and we are a colony by the way, outside the city of London, you're a colony, and, uh, yeah, uh, was required to maintain a register of slaves. Are you heard they have registration? <laughs> Slavery and the slave trade were legal and lawful at that time. However, I should ask, I correct, uh, habeas corpus, under common law, slavery cannot exist because of habeas corpus, right? Defend habeas corpus with your life, guys. Because once that goes, it's the only defence we have against slavery. It's habeas corpus. Give me the body. And the first, slave, the first big slavery case, the chap was released because the, 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 these uh, uh, defenders submitted a writ of habeas corpus. Give us back the guy's body. The man's body. They need to confirm he wasn't a, he wasn't a good, he was a man. And that's how the first the first case was won. Very interesting. Slave Trade Act 1807, blah 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 blah, right? What it does is it, it, it abolished slave trading across most of the British Empire. Not the the, the, the uh, Salon in India or a slightly different thing because East India Company were private corporations. Anyway. Uh, you're all aware of the British, us evil, nasty, god awful, racist, slaving British, right? Actually, East India Squadron. We used East India Squadron, right? We ended slavery in Africa. We went in there, and any king refused to refused to do away with slavery, refused to uh, condemn slavery, was removed. Come point, removed, and replaced by somebody who would end slavery, right? We nearly went to Denmark. We actually had that blockade in Denmark's port, right? To force Denmark to end slavery. Same with Germany. France and Spain just capitulated. We were going to obliterate every boat they had off the water. Uh, we nearly went to war with the Americans because the Americans were happily engaged in slave trading, and the Brits were shooting them, were sinking their vessels, freeing the slaves and sinking their vessels. They were called the East, uh, the, so they called the West Africa Squadron. Do read up on it, yeah? There should be a film about this. It's appalling, there's no good movies about this, right? These guys are out here, and they feed some of these 300,000 slaves, right? Uh, and uh, America's the like us. We also bombed the crap out of our brain as well until they feed all the slaves, that's an amazing story. That'd be an epic movie. Anyway, I'm proud of my heritage, guys. We as Brits, right? We ended slavery for the entire world. We were the ones who were instrumental in ending slavery. Yes, we stand in the shoulders of giants. We have an obligation to carry this on, right? To defend our slavery, the slavery of the little children who are getting 
great and pillage, right? So, uh, the traffic and all that stuff. Uh, we have an obligation to carry on the work that our forefathers started. If we don't do that, we're negligent. Right, I'm going to. Da, 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 da. Slavery Convention 1926. This is where the definitions are lie for slavery. So, for the purposes of the present convention, the following definitions are agreed upon, and you'll find that subsequent, all the different subsequent treaties and acts, and human rights acts, and European stuff, do not change the definition of slavery. The human rights act just says that slavery in all its forms is abolished. It doesn't define slave, the word slavery because it already has been defined. And the, here's the definitions. Slavery is the status or condition of a person over whom any or all, so it's any or all, even 0.00001% of a claim of ownership over you is slavery. Okay? Uh, of the, so slavery is the status or condition of a person over whom any or all of the powers attached to the right of ownership are exercised. Okay? Uh, the slave trade uh, which is different from slavery. The slave trade, which is, I would argue, the most closest land, are actually slave markets. And next time I go to court, I'm going to be very, 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 very vocal about that. Uh, the slave trade includes all acts involved in the capture, acquisition, or disposal of a person. Or it's so important to repeat those three words, right? This defines uh, slave trade. Capture, acquisition, disposal. What's a speed camera do? Captures. You fill out the forms. Or if you fill out the forms, you just Assume you're uh, presuming who you are anyway. Uh, acquisition and then dispose of you by selling you off to bailiff companies. Okay, I can you look at so many I walks of life. You get a council tax, they capture you because suddenly you've, you've, you're living in a house within some district. They've decided they run, right? So they've captured you. They then need to have acquired you by council tax, saying you and your, you're liable for council tax, and forcing you into a court, and then they dispose of you by again selling, to, selling you your debt on or forcing you to give them the debt. And interestingly, the medieval definition of a trap must be two springs, it must be double springs, right? You go to court and you find there's always two spring doors as you walk into that court. Yeah? Mark? Yeah. There's always two spring doors. It's a trap. Okay, what I've done, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, all acts involving the acquisition of a slave with a view to selling or exchanging him. All acts of disposal by sale and exchange of a slave acquired with a view to being sold or exchanged and in general every act of trade or transport in slaves, right? So that is a beautiful, that covers so many things and you guys please use it in your letters, you will put them on the back foot. And don't you make the acquisition, I, you, you're involved in slavery, ask them, do you believe you're involved in slavery? Put them in the spot, they're the professionals. Use a legal professional, do you believe that you're exempt of us? And the responses you get back are hilarious. Uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All, all human beings are born free legal dignity and rights. Interestingly, if you read this talk and you understand grammar, you find it talks about the legal person, then it's the, the, the natural person. Legal person, natural person, legal person, if you understand grammar. Anyway. All human beings are born free, we are equal as a civil person, civil, civil, civil individuals are equal, uh, men and women, some are bigger, some are smaller, some are bright, we're not all born, we're not all born free, so we're not all born equal as men and women, but we're born equal in the civil world, right, so that's two different entities there, dignity is the man or woman, rights is for the civil creature, so to see how this, it goes uh, man, civil, man, civil, yeah, yeah anyway. Uh, but important article 4 says no one shall be held in slavery or servitude, slavery in the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forums. doesn't define the word slavery or slave trade because already have been defined. Okay? So that's not an imperative document, however, that is a document of intent. I do quote it. Uh, Council of Europe, European Convention of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. So, oh, sorry. They will call it now the Convention of Human Rights. They're, 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 they've just dropped it from the title. So they've just dropped and fundamental freedoms in the title. You'll find if you talk to the official them, they'll talk about the Convention of Human Rights. They talk about EHCR, don't they? European Convention of Human Rights. It's not, it's called European Convention of Human Rights. They've got the FF at the end of it. Well, I'm obliged to remind them that there is an FF at the end of it, fundamental freedoms. Okay? Rights are there to defend your freedoms. You have freedoms, you're born with freedoms. Rights is what your civil creature is given to protect those freedoms. 
but it says in Article 4, no one should be held in slavery or servitude. Again, it doesn't define them because it has been defined. By this time they brought in servitude as well, so they've now, because what happens, corporations are going, we can wordsmith our way around that. Interesting, you want, you want to read the most, the tightest piece of legislation there is in the books, right? I'm talking about absolutely, literally, watertight piece of legislation. It's the 1873 Anti-Slave Trade Act. Right? Because what those corporations where the lawyers were very clever and sort of working their way around it. This document, if they found even one piece of straw in your boat, that was sufficient cause to believe you had slaves, slaves, you had been shipping slaves, they could sink it. But if you read this document, you'll go, there's no way, there's no squirm room left from at all. A beautiful document. Okay, so they revised it in 2010, they added two revisions to it. Those words don't change. The United Nations 1956 Supplementary Convention on the Abolition of Slavery, the Slave Trade and Institutions and Practices Similar to Slavery. So you may not be a slave, but it could be a situation where you're similar to slavery. Yeah? Uh, each of the state parties to this convention shall take all practical and necessary legislative and other measures to bring it progressively and as soon as possible the complete abolition or abandonment of the following institutions and practices. Blah 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 blah. Now this week is interesting. A. Debt bondage. It's an institution of practice similar to slavery. Debt bondage. That is to say the status or condition arising from a pledge by a debtor of his personal services or those of a person under his control as a security for a debt. Here's a question for you. Who done the FOI? It was actually Pekuni, respect. Uh, did the FOI to the cabinet and he asked him who owns the national debt? Oh, was in the cabinet. And they wrote back and said, the cabinet owns the national debt. So he said, well, why am I paying it? That's a simple guy, right? Uh, if the value of those services are reasonably assessed and are not applied towards the liquidation of the debt, or the length and nature of those services are not respectively limited and defined, now I'd argue that covers you from the mortgage argument comes in there. Because you're paying money, is that liquidating a debt? No. It's quite, to me it's quite clear. Uh, the next one, the next one is serfdom. That is to say, the condition or status of a tenant. Now, we don't own land in the UK. I don't know if you know this, you, you don't own your own land. The town owns the land. You're only renting the tenancy, buying the right or the franchise the, to use the tenancy. That's who you are. When, they, when the bailiffs are coming, kicking your door, you're treated as a tenant. Law of distress can only be levied against the tenant. And interestingly, until last year, parking ticket, uh, sorry, speeding tickets were levied on distress. Because you're a tenant driving on a, the, 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 the grounds. Anyway, so you are tenants, we're all tenants here. You've got your property. Whereas by law, custom or agreement bound to live and labour on land belonging to another person, persons the crown, and to rent some determinate service to some other person, whether for the world or not, and is not free to change his status. Okay, so much in there. I mean, literally, we can sit there for the next two days just going over each of those sentences and just look at the option possibilities there. Uh, Article 4. Any slave who takes refuge on board any vessel of a state party to this convention shall be ipso facto free. I would love to test that one. I've written to the police and said the police station's vessels. Any vessels of the state? Yes, they are. Are the court's vessels of the state? Yes, they are. So if you're standing in court, isn't it? If you've got nothing else, you're absolutely screwed, right? You've got nothing else to fall back on. I would urge somebody to use this one. I just quote Article 4 of the 1980 Nations 56 Supplementary Convention, which says, Any slave who takes refuge on board any vessel of the state party shall if so, if so fact will be free. Right? Are you a, is the state a state party? Yes, it is. Well, I'm not free. Can I go? Interesting, that comes from the old British uh, 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 anti slavery laws, where it said, Any uh, any slave setting foot in British soil was it so facto free. They've actually used, the United Nations has used the British Acts here, because we invented, we ended slavery, right? They've used our Acts here. Uh, Article 5, in a country with the abolition or abandonment of slavery or the institutions or practices mentioned in Article 1 of this convention is not yet complete act of mutilating 
mutilating branding or otherwise making marking of a slave or a person's servile status in order to indicate his status or as a punishment or for any other reason. Right? So this is abolished. But anyway. Right, so uh, it's supposed to be abolished as any act of mutilating FG, FGM for you guys that are doing it, people are going to uh, mutilation, genital mutilation. Branding. Now, when people write letters to you, they put numbers on them, don't they? They identify you as a number. Right? You ignore, that, you ignore that, you accept, you assume that number, you, you, you accept the presumption you're offering I don't, I say, what is that number? Are you offering me a brand? And uh, the responses you get back are very interesting because you'll quote them, I understand that you're not allowed to brand me, what you're doing is you're, you're trying to brand me here, can you confirm to me that you're not branding me? Go away at that point. Uh, or otherwise marking a slave. Uh, or a personal servile status in order to indicate a status so it's to do with your status so if they're in any way marking you to do with your status now oh, where did I start with this one? they've deemed us to be uh, 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 house owners, tenants they've deemed us to be a, a certain uh, 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 what do you call it? a geographical grouping they've, they've decided that I belong to Wigan Council they've decided that I belong to Greater Manchester Combined Authority they've decided that I belong to Britain they've decided I belong to England, right? That's all establishing my status. That's actually abolished in international law. And they, the UK signed up to it. Right, uh, Article 6. The act of enslaving another person or of inducing another person to give them, this is what the bailiffs get, this is the stuff I'm using against the bailiffs. The act of enslaving another person or of inducing another person to give himself or a person dependent upon them into slavery, or of attempting these acts, or being accessory thereto, or being a party to a conspiracy to accomplish any such acts, shall be a criminal offence. Under the laws of the state parties, we'll find it as a criminal offence, right? Anyway, I'll skip through this, right? Uh, I won't go, go on. Slavery, for the purposes of the present convention, slavery means, as defined in the Slavery Convention of 1926, which we saw earlier on, uh, the status and condition of a person over whom any or all the powers attached to the rights of ownership are exercised and slave means a person in such condition or status. So what they've done here is because when some people try to bind their way around the definition of slavery, they've reconfirmed that's what it means. Okay. Human Rights Act 1988. I hate this. Uh, everything in it is a, an absolute aberration except for this one section. And it's nice because it says, uh, no one should be held in slavery or servitude. My favourite part of that sentence is, for those who have read the Human Rights Act, is the full stop. Because all the other ones go, except, that one doesn't, right? No one should be held in slavery or servitude. Not just slavery, but servitude. Now I don't care how their national system defines slavery. I don't care what their, what their test cases are. I really don't give a flying hook, right? Because it's already been defined under international law. What they're trying to do now is water down the definitions of these words, right? We need to go in there and stand our ground, right? The most powerful position you can be is to stand in the court, as the Quakers did back in 1800, right? And say, you're a slave. You're involved in slave trading. Yeah? If you're an official, you are not going to be, you are not going to be accused of being a slave trader. We'll go over that. Oh, anyway, uh, Charter Mentor of the Fundamental Rights. So you see what they've done now, we used to have human rights and fundamental freedoms. You see what the wordsmiths in the European Union have done? They've now created this new entity, some of you may have missed, called a fundamental right. What the hell is that? Do not confuse that with human rights or fundamental freedoms. I don't care what that is. No, I have no idea what it is. This is what the, the new European laws are based upon this principle, by the way. All these new European laws are based upon that principle of fundamental rights. It says, human dignity is inviolable. The word dignity means human value. You have a value as a human. Okay. You have a value as a human. Okay. You have a value as a human, right? Uh, and that's what dignity means. It must be respected and provided. Uh, no one should be held in slavery or servitude. No one should be required to perform forced labour. labour. Trafficking. I don't take to go over trafficking. That is a beautiful one again. Not beautiful for the point of view it happens, but 
legally is so well defined, right? Uh, what the government's trying to do just now is water down human trafficking to deal with only sex, slavery and children. Human trafficking covers a whole raft of things. And I would argue every time you're forced to go into a court, these civil private hearings, that is human trafficking. And if you look at the definition, it'll cover that, but we don't have time. This is the key document, guys, the Corner and Justices Act 2009, right? This to return slavery back to a criminal act. Because then where it's key is, you must notice the other party. Now, I understand, I state from this, that a state of slavery exists, and I hereby notice you of my understanding, right? You now know this, right? Because it says here, that a person commits an offence if D holds another person in slavery or servitude and the circumstances are such that D knows or ought to know that the person so held. Basically what it says is both parties must be aware of it. You notice them. You're enslaving me. I'm recognising that you're doing this. Right? Uh, blah, 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 blah. A person guilty of this offence is liable to summary conviction to imprisonment for term not exceeding the relevant period or a fine. Right? Blah, 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 blah. In England that is uh, 12 months. Uh, relevant period in Scotland at six months, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Northern Ireland at six months. So someone can be jailed for 12 months and a massive fine on top of this, and they lose their job, and you get a professional records claim, and you get a massive claim against the company as well, because they, their chief exec allowed them to slave you. You won't get as far, trust me, you write letters with this stuff, guys, things go away. They just panic and go away. Anti-Slavery, the Act 2010, right? It's on the 10th of October. Well, we'll go with this. So 10th of October, I urge you all, the 10th of October this year, to proudly go and announce yourselves as anti-slavery abolitionists. Are you going into the council and announce new bastards involved in slavery? Okay. Uh, please, everybody, just let them know you're involved in slavery, guys. You've got an obligation to do it under law. Take no choice. Human trafficking is a form of slavery, right? I'll, I'll just give the very brief overview of what human trafficking is. I've got a few minutes. <laughs> the 2005 Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking in Human Beings, yeah? Shut up! For the purposes of this convention... Can you shout a bit louder, please? Can't hear you. For the purposes of this convention, trafficking in human beings shall mean, now this is what I'm saying about water tight, it's really good. So trafficking in human beings recognised in the Council of Europe, right, it's law, it shall mean the recruitment, transportation, tra uh, transfer, harbouring or receipt of persons by means of threat or use of force or other forms of coercion, of abduction, of fraud, of deception, of the abuse of power, or of a position of vulnerability, or of the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control of another person. Is that dropped a few, that drops a jaw, that doesn't, that is so... Can we go to run over that again? One minute. Right, I'll, I'll get this on the website, you can read this, I've got the full presentations here. It's on freedom-northwest.com in the file section. It's not there for a couple of years now, a couple of three years now. Feel free to download it. All the other docs I've got, I've put up in public. Uh, if somebody can give me a, somewhere I can dump my docs, happy to do that. Uh, everything I do is in the public. I'll, read, I'll just do it again. The traffic in human beings should mean the recruitment, transportation, transfer, harboring, or a seat of persons by means of the threat by means of the threat or use of force or other form, they think we're bailiff man here, men here by the way, or use of force or abduction or uh, coercion or fraud or deception or the abuse of power or a position of vulnerability or the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control of another person for the purposes of exploitation. Exploitation should include at a minimum. Now what the government's done, they've, they've, the government's redefined this under the, the, the uh, uh, freedom Act, freedom Act, but they've, they've redefined this and legally they've redefined human trafficking as uh, that's the maximum. However, there's a minimum, that is the minimum, right? Uh, it says, uh, for minimum, it's prostitution, forced labour or services, slavery, and removal of organs. That's the minimum. You've got to raise that bar from the minimum up to the maximum. Let the government know what slavery is, right? We define what slavery and human trafficking is, not them. And on that note, guys. Any questions or? No. 
the old board will go home. That's why they couldn't do it. The Olympics, they had guys in the Olympics who were forced them to do labour. That was quoted and they backed off. This is, when you use this in your letters, guys. Why, why attack them with a pen knife? You know, go with a bloody blunderbuss. That's what that is. You're using a hammer to crack them up, yeah? Because you've got them. In, and the good thing with slavery as well, slavery crosses every jurisdiction and it's the only one that crosses military jurisdiction as well. And we are under military law. That yeah. covers everything. Anyway. Thank you. Right, another big hand for... Uh,